artificial intelligence has always been a topic for stories, books and films. Today it is an idea that we get more and more used to, but might still be a little scared of. It sounds like a great theme for a magic show, because it is somewhere on the border between possible and impossible. So no surprise magicians have created artificial intelligence a long time ago. Or at least they pretended to. At the end of the 19th century, magic was as popular as never before. Magicians presented themselves as clever inventors and masters of deception. They could make people appear, disappear or levitate, they could read thoughts or make flowers grow in seconds. So when in 1875 a British magician John Neville Maskelin presented his latest invention, Psycho, it was easy to believe that Maskelin managed to create artificial intelligence. My name is Alex Romanov, I'm a magician and an art historian. On this channel I talk about magic and its history. In this episode I will tell you about one of the most impressive illusions of all time. The Psycho. Automata. Mechanical figures of people or animals that could move, play games or interact with spectators had been popular for centuries. For instance, in the late 18th century, the Turk, an automaton that could play chess, toured Europe with great success and every European king or emperor was eager to see it. Unfortunately, the Turk turned out to be a deception. There was an operator hidden inside who controlled the movements of the figure. So later this was something that people already suspected, when they saw an automaton that was just too smart. Magicians had to come up with something new. And they did. Psycho was the most famous mechanical figure invented by John Neville Maskelin. After its first performance in 1875, the British newspaper The Morning Post wrote The public and the press declare that nothing half so wonderful in the form of an automaton has ever been introduced to the public. A small figure that was approximately 50 cm high sat on a clear glass pedestal in the form of a cylinder. One could clearly see through the cylinder. Therefore, it was not possible that an assistant was hidden there. Saika could play a card game of whist with three volunteers from the audience. Cards were dealt, Saika had his cards placed in 13 holders so that he could reach every card with his hand. Saika played the game and sometimes could even win. The automaton did not simply perform some random actions, he followed the rules and apparently processed the information. After the round of a whist was finished, Saika shook hands with his partners to the delight of the spectators. Saika could also perform arithmetical operations and give answers to mathematical problems by sliding numerals with his hand. Moreover, he could divine words or numbers which members of the audience had secretly written. And this was almost a century before first portable calculators. And I'm not even talking about the fact that calculators cannot read minds. Psycho gave more than 4,000 performances and attracted thousands of people who wanted to see the invention live. Public and press came up with all sorts of explanations of the mechanisms at work, starting with magnetism or electricity and finishing with a boy or a small dog being hidden inside the machine. Maskelin agreed that it was not real magic, but at the same time he said that it was not an illusion either. Maskelin claimed that it was pure science, but science so advanced that even the most educated minds could not understand it. In one of his letters, Maskelin wrote, My automaton is not a toy, but a very scientific piece of mechanism, the result of many years of study and experimenting. There's no trickery whatever about it, but purely mechanical and self-acting being, isolated upon a piece of clear glass. So, at the end of the 19th century, Maskelin invented a purely mechanical and self-acting being. Is it just me, or does it sound like Maskelin had godlike powers? Oh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! In reality, Psycho was an illusion. But the secret was very clever. Jim Steinmeier, in his wonderful book Hiding the Elephant, presented a brilliant research about Psyche and revealed the secret behind the solution. With the aid of a small bellows, air was pushed up through the stage and into the glass cylinder. This affected corresponding bellows concealed inside the wooden chest, beneath the figure. 
Masculine's partner, George Cook, concealed backstage, could see Psycho's playing cards. By blowing or drawing through the bellows, he moved the automaton's hand and selected the proper card. As the spectators stared at the glass cylinder looking for assistance or electric wires, they never suspected that it was the actual air inside it that was responsible for the illusion. And now the fun part begins. If you're a magician, you have to protect your secret, no matter what. At the same time, you also have to protect your intellectual rights to the secret. So Masculine patented his invention. Not the psycho itself, but the principle that he used. And as every patent, it is available to the general public. Very soon, Dr. Paul, a writer on games, found this patent and wrote an article where he correctly explained the secret behind Masculine's illusion. Masculine immediately gave a public reply. We believe it is almost impossible to construct an android upon Paul's principle, though not with the variety of movements Psycho is able to go through. After that, John Clark, Masculine's colleague who took part in the invention of Psycho, wrote an article on magic for the Encyclopedia Britannica, where he mentioned Psycho and said that In the same year in which Psycho appeared, the joint inventors patented a method of controlling the speed of clockwork mechanism by compressed air or gas. But it is not known whether the principle obscurely described in the specification was applicable in any way to the invisible agency employed in Psycho. So basically he said, yeah, we invented this mechanism, but we do not use it in Psycho. Well played. More exposures followed. In 1879, in the book Ancient and Modern Magic by Opry Verry, and later in 1898, in the book Magic, Stage Illusion, Special Effects and Trick Photography, the exact method used by Masculine was explained. However, surprisingly, it did not affect Masculine or Psycho in any way. Psycho was a huge hit in London for another 30 years until it gave its last performance in 1910, after which it was donated to the London Museum. So, as it often happens in magic, secrets were there, available to anyone, and yet it seems that people did not really need these secrets. What they needed was a miracle. And I think there were two reasons why this miracle, the Psycho, was received particularly well. On the one hand, in the age of incredible technical progress, people did not really doubt that something like Psycho could actually be created. And on the other hand, Psycho was still an enigma. It reminded of spiritualistic seances and offered a sensation of mystery, something that people so desperately needed during this time of science and rationality. In 1878, American superstar magician Harry Keller had a copy of Psycho built for him and performed with it in the US. He later gave it to Harry Houdini, whose wife gave it to Dunninger after Houdini's death. It was later purchased and restored by John Cohen, and it was him who presented it during the Paul Daniels show, fragments from which you have seen in this video. By the way, you can find the link to this video in the description. It is really fun to watch, so make sure to check this out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can support this channel by hitting the like button and the subscribe button and also the notification button so you do not miss the next episode. And by the way, the next episode will be super special. It will be the longest episode on this channel because it will be dedicated to the greatest close-up magician of all time, Mr. Di Vernon, the professor. So make sure not to miss it and uh, Stay tuned! This was Art of Impossible. My name is Alex Romanov. I will see you next time.